Hey guys, it's Scott from Horse Race. Now, this will take a look at third graph of the 2024 Kentucky Derby, and I'm not going to do a full contender by contender breakdown. Uh, on Past the Wire, John Stetton has a video where he does, you know, every horse in the field goes over it. So if you want to see the full breakdown of contenders, I highly recommend y'all check out his channel. But I do want to elaborate on a couple of things that he said. And, you know, one is, you know, talking about horse in the forward moving pattern and, you know, going to the Derby. And then, you know, let's figure out what number it's going to take to be able to win the uh, Kentucky Derby. We can go through history for that. And you can do a lot of this yourself. I'm going to try to do it before I get into it. And it's all free. You know, see the previous years in the Kentucky Derby. You know, go to uh, thoroughgraph.com, you know, hold over thoroughgraph data, go down to archives, and you have every Kentucky Derby, you know, from last year all the way to 2000. You can go go back and, you know, look. And if you want to buy the uh, past performance for, you know, going to the Derby for all the contenders, you go to buy thoroughgraph data, go to, you know, full menu, you know, click on the one special, and then just, you know, follow through. It costs $25, uh, you know, a little expensive compared to some of the other speed figure products, but. I think it's more than worth it, to be honest with you. And, you know, let's get right on into it. Before we can, you know, talk about Thoroughgraph and Derby, let's figure out what number we need to get into for a ballpark to, you know, win it. Like, you know, that buyer, like right around, a, you know, 100, you know, anywhere from 100 to 105 is typically, you know, won it. And, you know, so let's figure out what Thoroughgraph number we need. And to do that, we got to go back to history. And we got 2023 with Mage. You know, see, he won with a zero. And then... uh. You know, go to, uh, you know, the year before the year that Rich Strike won. He ran a one, uh, 1. 1.2 or one and one and a half, however you want to call it. And then, uh, you know, go to the year before Medina Spirit, you know, one and a half. Uh, I left out 2020. That was the year the Derby was ran later, later in the year. And yeah, I just kind of see this outlier, you know, horses I think should have been bigger and stronger as the year went on. And didn't want to put that in there. I thought it would mess things up. But, you know, Max Security won with a, you know, one and a quarter. Uh, you know, got a 2018, you know, Justify. You know, he had a negative one and a half in that race. Uh, you know, go on this one, Always Dreaming, uh, negative one and a half. You know, go the year before with Nyquist and ran a uh, negative, or I'm sorry, ran a quarter. So you can see right around, you know, negative one, zero, one. You know, that, that's the number it's going to take to win it. So, you know, we need to find horses whenever handicapping that can get, you know, right at that number. And one of the horses we're going to take about, or take a look at is going to be Sierra Leone by Chad Brown. And, you know, this horse in the bluegrass ran a one and a half. Uh, you know, four in the Risen Star ran a four and a half. And, you know, he took a forward move. You know, it's a small forward move from a two to three, but definitely something you want to see going from four and three quarters to four and a half. And then the big move. And we're going to look at previous Chad Brown horses real quick and see how they did, you know, with the following the, Three race pattern derby with bluegrass. And we'll look at Zandon first. And you see Zandon has that same, you know, six and a half, four and a half, uh, two and a quarter. Uh, improved to one and a half in the bluegrass. And then and the derby bounced to a three and a quarter. Uh, you know, so definitely not, not a sign you'd want to see. And because you're not, you know, you like to see this number move, you know, four, get down to like a zero, negative half, something like that. And, you know, let's look at 2018. That's the year that Good Magic ran. And, you know, we'll see what happens, uh, you know, there. And so you got good magic, five, three, one and a half, uh, one and a quarter, went down to a, a half or negative half in the bluegrass and then paired that back up again in the derby. So he didn't move forward off that. So not a not a positive sign, in my opinion. Uh, you know, it's good for that year because good magic did get second, but. You know, if you're hoping for that forward movement, Sarah, that's another one that's kind of negative. We'll take a look at one more, and that's a uh, practical joke. And, you know, this was a horse that was a, you know, one-turn mile type horse. Definitely didn't want no part of a mile and a quarter. And I thought Chad Brown still got a good effort out of the horse. You know, paired up fives, uh, two, three, came back, you know, see one uh, negative half at Keeneland. And then, you know, at Churchill ran a, a – Two and a half, so he regressed off that. So that's three horses that have been three of Chad Brown's more top horses in recent years, and you know none of them managed to go forward off that. So if you're Sierra Leone, you know you see this one and a half, and you know you wonder if the horse is going to get take a step forward. Like you know, if you knew this horse horse had a forward move to like a zero or you know negative one, negative half, I feel real good. But after seeing that, I'm not so sure if the horse is going to. You know, but it definitely puts a seed of doubt. And he can. There's nothing that says, you know, a horse can. It's his horse race. He's something new every day. But, 
you know, we're going to talk about the, you know, other favorite in this race. And, you know, that's going to be fierceness. And we're going to, you know, go back up and find him for the year. And, uh, you know, here he is, uh, you know, the two-year-old ran a three and a half, regressed to a 12, ran a, you know, negative one and a half in the uh, Breeders' Cup, and then came back in the, uh, you know, first race back, ran a four and a half, and then jumped all the way to uh, negative three and a, three and a quarter in the, uh, you know, Florida Derby. So you got to wonder, like, that number right there is way faster. And I'm almost certain he's going to bounce off of it, but it does kind of make you wonder if, he can still bounce to a zero or a one and win the race as you start looking at, you know, the other top return like Sarah Leon. You know, it's not so sure he's going to be able to take a forward move. And, you know, let's look at the – probably the third choice horse, if I had to guess, you know, Forever Young, uh, 11, 8, you know, 5 and 3 quarters, and paired up ones. And I like to think third start off the layoff. You know, there'll be a, a forward move there to maybe get to a zero or a, you know, potential negative. But – you know, so far, none of these horses, have, you know, other than these two have really shown that, you know, they can get down to that, you know, winning derby number. I know some horses will move forward that, you know, running like threes and fours that will, you know, in derby, that they'll peak at that, you know, right around that number. But you got to wonder if Fierceness could still run, you know, bounce three or four points off this and still be considered a, a bounce to still be able to win the race. And, you know, that being said, so I'm going to get to it for breaking down the contenders, but you know, definitely, you know, check all this out, go back, look through history and, you know, use that to, you know, help handicap the Kentucky Derby. And thanks for watching, guys. Plenty more to come.